Hey students, now in this quick video I'm going to show you how to put together your uh, assessment information in an Adobe Spark page uh, using a desktop computer. So some of you who have got iPhones or iPads you can be using your, uh, your portable devices but if you don't you can do it really easily just through the Spark website. So let's flick over to the Spark website, you can see the address up there. Um, you'll be prompted to log in using your, um, uh, your Adobe account and then you can get through to this Spark homepage. Now, with any of these Spark products, um, you're looking for this big uh, plus sign here that uh, prompts you to add something in. So uh, to make a Spark page, I'm gonna press that plus button and go down to the web page option. So this is gonna open up a nice sort of scrolling web page where we can add in um, all the details from our, um, our subjects and add in the notes as well. So I'm going to put a title in here. Let's put in Creative Thinking Folio and I'll put my name here. Cool. And I can add a background image here. Um, so you want to kind of go to the upload photo option and if you've got your images saved on your computer um, that's a great place to add it in. Let's add in this photo of me just so you know who it is. Um, the next part we can scroll down and just start adding in your information. Uh, have a look on eLearn in terms of what you need to put in. There's usually a checklist um, and for me I'm going to put in exercise one uh, let's say collage. I can make that into a heading or different types of headings um, or later on you might even want to use like a dot point list or a numbered list but for now let's go with our heading and if it's just one image that's really simple I just add in a photo go to my upload photo again and let's put in a collage Excellent, and that's come up there with my collage. Um, if you want to put in multiple images to maybe show a process through something, then maybe the photo grid is a good option. So here I can upload a photo and I can select one, two, let's add in, might ask me just to add in one at a time actually here. So I'll add that one, let's add this one. And let's add in a couple more. This one. And this one. Okay, great. So now it's got a little grid full of photos. And you can make some adjustments here in terms of which ones you want to have uh, as larger or smaller. Um, or if you want to kind of move them around in different directions you can choose which way you want to present it. Now let's save it like that for now. And later on, you'll be able to then open these up separately and have uh, a closer look at these as well. Cool. So the other thing that you might want to do is the split layout, which is where if you want one photo and a lot of text next to it. So on one side of the screen, let's put in an image. Now it's going to want to fill that side of the screen with your image, so it does tend to crop things off. Um, but what you can do is you can actually change the focal point of it. So I'm going to drag it over here to focus on the face. Save that. There we go. And then I can add in my text here. And I can still use that same kind of uh, formatting and layout of um, dot points or paragraphs, etc. Now you'll notice that in this kind of uh, format in Spark page, you can't change the fonts or things like that. The reason is that Spark does a lot of the work for you in terms of spacing things out and making sure that they will look good no matter where you open this up. So whether it opens up on a phone or a tablet or a desktop computer, um, it's designed to be able to uh, realign things and transfer it all so that it will actually come up and look good in different formats. 
If you do want a kind of slightly different look to it, you can go to the themes and choose a different theme that will give you a different range of fonts um, and some other different kind of graphic elements here. So you can see that those, those fonts are, are changed in this version. Um, but apart from that, uh, it does keep things pretty nailed down to a particular format for you, um, but uh, it does make it easier for you to then share that across different formats. So you can fill it in um, as you go, adding in each of your required elements. And then once it's saved and ready, you go up to the share button and you can do a few things here. You can publish and share the link. Um, I'm going to create the link which it will then prompt me to copy it and I can paste that into the eLearn submission, which means that your teacher will be able to open it up and see it really nicely on the computer. So I can go here, copy that link, paste that into eLearn. The other thing I want you to, sh to sh the other thing I want to show you how to do is to go to share and print. Now this is important because on eLearn we do need a kind of record of something in file form. So Instead of uh, choosing a destination to a printer here, we can choose to save it as a PDF and it saves it as a, a printable document. It doesn't have all the kind of nice scrolling and things that you get um, on the actual web page, but it'll have all the information there. And that's what you can actually save onto eLearn that, so that we have a permanent record. So I'll click save there and then I can upload that into eLearn. So, I hope that's helpful. Uh, it might take a little bit of playing around just to get used to some of the idiosyncrasies, but um, it is a really good piece of technology to be able to use, particularly to be able to share these kinds of uh, projects across lots of different formats. So